Hey guys, so I'm doing a little update video on how I've been doing. I haven't been doing any videos lately. Um, I've just been kind of in this very introspective mood, <laughs> getting rid of more uh, addictions in my life and just doing a lot of reflecting and stuff. So. I wanted to talk about that and also talk about sobriety and kind of update you guys on how that's going. And the other day I was soaking in the tub because I've been <laughs> doing these insane workouts. Like I'm a little late to the party, um, but there's a fitness phenom on YouTube doing free workouts named Carolyn Gervon, and uh, I love her. She's adorable. She's Irish, and um, so I've been doing her workouts and lifting super, super heavy. So <laughs> like, um, because I'm cutting out like all the substances in my life, I need to get that natural high. So I'm like, I'm just gonna do the most torturous workouts I can do, and then um. So I was soaking in the tub with some Epsom salts for my like my entirely fried body, head to toe. And I was just thinking about stuff and I had a prompting. And when I say prompting, if you're not familiar with Christianese, that just means like maybe the Holy Spirit brings something to your mind that you wouldn't normally think about. But a prompting to check and see um, how much time I have sober and I had saved it in my calendar the day I started um, I think it was January 6th of this year and it's not really even something I think about that much but so I checked it and I realized I had um, a little over six months of sobriety and I was like wow this is really cool and, and then I felt prompted to share it on Facebook so I did, and um, I share just because I want to give glory to God for what he has done in my life, and also to encourage other people that he does still do miracles today. He is there. He does care about us, and especially when we make the choice to trust him. He really, really honors that. So... I shared that I had struggled with alcohol, alcoholism after, especially after losing my daughter. And that I, you know, I surrendered it to God. He delivered me. And I went from being a heavy drinker. We're talking like, I, you know, I wasn't keeping track, but probably the equivalent of like 12 drinks a night. Um, in shots, mostly vodka, to nothing, cold turkey. And I had no withdrawals. I didn't have cravings. I uh, God just delivered me. And to this day, I'm like, well, I don't really struggle. I get the occasional little, like, if I see other people drinking beer, I'm like, oh, a sip of beer would be good right now, whatever. But then I'm like, no, 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 you know, like, I don't want to, I never want to go back to where I was. And so like, really like this is just my new life, sober, um, doing, you know, pretty well. Like life is never perfect, but like, I love waking up not hungover. I love not feeling like I'm in bondage to anything. And so recently too, maybe two or three months ago, I also gave up nicotine. Um, because I was using that excessively and I wasn't, I wasn't smoking. I was doing like the lozenges and I know that I was doing some research on them. And at the time I was trying to do keto again and I thought like it might be interfering with that, but I also read that it's not great for bone health and that's a big concern of mine. Um, I don't want to develop osteoporosis because I already have problems. I already have like 
scoliosis. I have like a road of scoliosis. Like my spine is all messed up. So I'm like, I'm not going to do anything that's going to make things worse. Right. So I gave up nicotine, cold turkey, and that kind of plunged me into a depression where I had to like figure, I mean, just give my, my brain time to reset because I really, you know, I had no idea how much nicotine was masking like a band-aid. Um, my, you know, depression, anxiety, um, just, you know, the normal human stuff we deal with. And I really like, I mean, like, it was rough. Giving up nicotine was worse than quitting drinking and that's honest, honest truth, but I just, I was like, I had this conviction that I wanted to do it and I kept going. So now I have two or three months without nicotine. I don't know. Um, but I just, um, really feel like God honors that so much when we're willing to come to him with, you know, like our, our hurts and our pains and our struggles. We're willing to surrender those things to him that, you know, for all intents and purposes become idols in our lives if we're turning to it instead of God. If we're using it to mask our sadness, whatever, you know, negative feelings we might be trying to suppress. Um, we, you know, and this is, I do not want to like anyone feel condemned if you are working through those things. Like, I don't think Jesus loves you any less if you're smoking or if you're drinking or even if you're using drugs. He just wants us to work with him to get to the point where we can lay those things down for our own good, obviously, and also so that we can experience more of his grace. So I kind of think of it as like, we are a vessel, right? The Bible calls us jars of clay. And a jar is empty, right? A jar is empty and actually quite fragile if you think about it, but we are empty on our own, apart from God, we're very empty and we're always looking for things to fill us up and you know i have my vices of choice you have yours we all have our things that we turn to to try to fill ourselves up and i mean you can you can fill yourself up and numb the pain and whatever but what that does is because you're already full that leaves so much less room for the spirit of god to come in and fill you and in case you don't know this, the reason why you were created is to experience intimacy with God and to be full of his Holy Spirit, full of his presence, his glory, all the wonderful things that is God. Um, when you put your faith in Jesus Christ, he sends the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit, to come and reside within you. And the Bible calls it our seal, our deposit, and he's always with us and he doesn't leave us. But if we're trying to get our needs met and filling up our vessels with, you know, things that aren't of him, there's just less and less room for his presence. And so I've been experiencing just walking through that and um, really in this point in my life, just feeling closer to God than I ever have and really honestly excited every morning to get up and spend my alone time with God. I find that works best if I wake up before everyone else and I, I make my coffee, I let my dog out, and then I will spend time reading the word of God and praying and just really communing with him. And honestly, like his presence is so strong and so present there with me. Um, he's so very real in my life. And I just hope that if nothing else, you can see that 
God is real and he wants to be in your life. And for someone like me, who's gone through some of like the worst things a person can go through, like the traumatic um, sudden death of my child and then struggling with a really severe addiction and coming out of that and tons of other stuff I won't go into, but that at this point in my life, I love God more than ever. And because he walked with me through those things and he never left my side. And one verse I think about often is, I think it was a psalm where King David said, before I was afflicted, I went astray. And I identify with that because I think that's human nature, to resist God, to push him away, to want to do things our way. And God will allow hard, painful things to happen in our lives to get our attention and to bring us to the end of ourselves and like that's something that now I confess more than ever it's like God I know apart from you I am so weak I'm so lost sometimes I'm so dumb I just I need you so much every single day and I think that's the point that he wants us to get to is real life that's all of us like I'm not alone in that we all are the Bible says we're like sheep that have gone astray and we need a shepherd Jesus is our shepherd, and without him, we're just stumbling through life in the dark, kind of at the mercy of the elements and um, the other supernatural forces in the world, which are real and are working to keep you from God. So that was a lot. Um, and also, I did want to touch on something that I kind of just came to realize that I have found peace in an area where previously I did not have peace. And this is having to do with other people and other people who have hurt me. And um, wounded me. And things that I had to pray through, like even things that happened a long time ago. Forgiveness. It is not a one-time process. It's definitely a one-time event. It's definitely a process. And I would wake up sometimes and I got really serious about it. I'm like, God, I know I have unforgiveness against certain people because when I think of them, I am angry. I'm still angry. It's like a visceral anger, right? And we have, if you're a Christian, you have to forgive people. And the Bible says that if you do not forgive other people, God will not forgive you. It's serious. And if you want to, if you have some quibbles with that, you need to check yourself because Jesus paid an unbelievably high price to buy your forgiveness, to buy your salvation, so that we can come to him now and he will forgive us no matter what we've done because he paid such a high price to cover all of our sin and Sometimes I think about it and I literally like, I'll get, I'll be overcome with, there's like the perfect spotless lamb, a man who never did anything wrong. He, he came, he went around doing good and healing people and casting out demons and healing, or I said healing, but, um, he was the only person to live without sin and he was the king of the universe. He was God you know, in human form and the person least deserving to die the horrible death that he did and the, and the torment and the torture and the public shame that he went through for us. It's anyway, so if you're having trouble forgiving people, <laughs> you need to focus on the cross and what Jesus did for you. He died for you when you were still a sinner, when you were lost and dead in your sin so that you could be free. And if he loves you enough to set you free, he wants you to do 
do likewise to other people to set them free from their debt that they owe you. And the Bible, actually, there's a parable. I should have looked this up, but Jesus talked about how a man who owed tons and tons of money to a king, I think it was a king, he couldn't pay it. And the king was like, all right, you can't pay this debt. You and your family are going to be sold so I can recoup some losses. And the man, like, cried and pleaded, have mercy on me, forgive me, blah, blah, blah. So the king was like, fine, you know what, you're forgiven, just go. And then, so that man, the servant, goes and finds a fellow servant who owes him far less money. And he's like, you better pay me or, you know, I'm going to make you pay me. And then the king finds out about it. And he's like, really? Like, I just forgave you this massive debt and you couldn't even forgive your fellow servant for something that's far more insignificant. So you are going to be taken away and cast out into the utter darkness where there's weeping and gnashing of teeth, basically hell. So this is serious, guys. Like this is so serious. If you refuse to forgive people, you are in danger of eternal hell. And if you don't think that's real, well, you'll find out. You'll find out eventually. Um, there's a lot of testimonies. Like there's a woman, Lori Ditto, um, D-I-T-T-O. Maybe I'll link her testimony down below, but she had unforgiveness and God allowed her to experience death and going to hell and the torments of hell because of her unforgiveness and he sent her back so she could warn other people. And she was like a sincere, committed Christian, but she had not forgiven. And it's a warning, you have to forgive people. So sorry, I'll start, I'll stop harping away on this, but like I take it super seriously. So I have been praying, I'm like, God, help me to completely forgive these people. Some of these, you know, these, these wounds, this whatever is from years ago, and some of it's more recent. And I would pray every day. And then it's like sometimes another thing will come up, maybe even that I forgot about, but it's something I need to pray. Like it's a process, praying, praying, praying. And it's months, months. And then just recently I realized like that thing that I used to be in bondage to, that anger, that paranoia, whatever, like it's gone. Like I haven't thought about that in, I've let it go. And I, I, it just kind of like slowly like drifted away from me. And I was like, wow, I have been doing this and now I'm seeing results. Like prayer is powerful. And when you choose to forgive people, you're just setting yourself free. God will still deal with them. Every, the Bible says that everyone is going to have to stand in front of the judgment seat of Christ. And if you are a believer and if you have asked for forgiveness of your sins, you are forgiven. You are cleansed with the blood of Jesus. And all that stuff is removed from you. It's as good as gone. But if you are unrepentant and, you know, just you're, you're going to have to give an account someday. But anyway, so I think that's the thing with forgiveness is that you're like, it's not fair. <laughs> they hurt me, whatever. And you just have to just trust God and just God, I'm, I'm choosing to let it go. And I know you're just, you've got it. I can trust you with this. And honestly, when I think about hell, I would not want to send my worst enemy there. Not that I really have any enemies because of forgiveness. But anyways, it's it's like really, if you get an understanding of eternity and what heaven and hell really are and, and how very real they are, you will get serious about forgiving people. And... Um, 
and you will reap the rewards. You'll have more peace. You'll be closer to God and he will forgive you. So, so yeah, I think you know if you're holding unforgiveness because you'll still be angry, you'll be bitter, um, you'll want to get revenge yourself. And honestly, it really poisons every aspect of your life. Like it's really easy to see bitterness in someone else and it's very unattractive. It's so off-putting and it really poisons all your future relationships because like you have that bone to pick, you've got that ax to grind, whatever. It's like you're not able to really love anyone from a very pure place. And I've seen this. I've seen bitterness destroy people. And it's just kind of sad because really the person that it ends up hurting the most is you. And the person who hurt you, for all you know, they could just be off living their happy lives and not giving any Fs, you know? And here you are, you're getting eaten up inside and it's stealing your peace. And so anyways, that's really what I wanted to talk about is forgiveness and um, letting things go, releasing people. And, uh, you know, it's definitely that, you know, the golden rule, which is from the Bible, treating other people how you want to be treated. And that means extending grace to people, believing love believes the best. And love covers, it covers a multitude of sins. So when we choose to be gracious, be forgiving, be loving, we are acting like Jesus, which is what he wants from us and really the highest state of existence that a human can attain so and also getting free for ourselves and um experiencing more joy because <laughs> um if you are bogged down with unforgiveness you're just not very happy so anyways guys i think i'll just wrap it up here um some people did reach out to me um, privately and know that I am very happy to pray with you. If you are struggling with um, addiction or unforgiveness, whatever, you know, I'm happy to pray with you, of course, but just remember that God is real he is there and he loves you just as much as he loves me and i know he loves me a lot so really god is he's our healer he's our comforter he's our everything and he's only just a prayer away so anyways guys i love you bye